All right, absolute max and min, first derivative. So for this one, I would actually rewrite it before I took my derivative, and I would make it x squared minus 9 to the negative 1. I find that easier. So first derivative is negative 1 times x squared minus 9 to the negative 2. Derivative of the inside is 2x. So my derivative looks like this. Negative 2x over x squared minus 9 squared. So where it's equal to 0, that's going to be where the top is equal to 0. So where the top equals 0 is going to be one of my critical numbers. Where the bottom equals 0 is going to be where it's undefined. So for this one, I actually have 5 to test. Uh, well, not 5. Um, I have 5 numbers all together. I'm only going to test certain ones. Why? Why wouldn't I test all of these? So um, if you look, I only have to test the ones in my interval. And negative 3 and positive 3 actually fall outside of my interval. So I don't even have to test those. So I am going to take uh, my negative 1, my 0, and my positive 1, and I am going to test those in these intervals. Um, when I plug in a negative 1, I get 1 minus 9 on bottom, so I get negative 1 eighth. When I get 0, I get negative 1 ninth. And then when I test positive 1, I get negative 1, 8. So um, this would actually be my max. Um, and this would be my min. So I actually have two mins. And they, they're showing the actual point. So it's negative 1 negative one-eighth as the actual point. Do you want us to put that in a... It's, it's not, not necessary, but you do need to recognize that that is a point, you know, so. Rolle's theorem says it has to begin and end at the same point, so your first step is to actually plug those two points in. So for this one, all right, now that I can write, they both equal one. Once you have that, you're looking for a zero that falls in there. So we're gonna take first derivative here, which is two x plus eight, set that equal to zero, which gives us x equals negative four. Um, if you find more than one, you're looking for one that falls in this. So that is your C that meets that requirement. It does fall in your interval. All right. uh, mean value theorem for this one, you are finding the mean value, so just it's f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. That's your mean value. So you actually want to plug it in. So we're going to plug in a 4. All right, that's our f of b minus f of a. If we plug in a 0, all over 4 minus 0. So for the first one, we're going to get negative 8, right, plus 8. Wait. All right, so we get 3 minus 3 over 4, which gives us 0. That's our mean value. So we are looking for, so mean value does, is not always going to be 0. It could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 1 half for all you know. Whatever this is, you're going to set your first derivative equal to that. So we're going to take first derivative which ends up being, what, negative x plus 2. And we're going to set that equal to 0, which gives us x equals 2, which is in our interval, which satisfies the mean value theorem. This one, increasing, decreasing. So we're going to do first derivative. And we're going to find critical numbers. So this is, we're going to use our quotient rule. So derivative of the top is 1 times the bottom plus the top derivative of the bottom, which is just 1, all over the bottom squared. 
This should be a minus. There we go. It's just a 3 over x plus 3 squared. This is quotient rule. So this is never going to be equal to 0 because the numerator will never equal 0. But you can get an undefined where the denominator equals 0. So I do have one critical number at x equals negative 3. So I'm going to take my critical number and I'm going to set up intervals. Just two of them. Always one more than the number of critical numbers you have. Take a number in that interval. So let's say if we take negative 4 and 0. Um, so, and you just plug it back in to the, um, to the derivative. So we're actually going to plug it back into this. The top is always positive. The bottom is always going to be positive. So that's going to be increasing. Once again, the top is positive. The bottom can always be positive. Increasing. So on both of these intervals, it's increasing. Which can happen. So concavity is always second derivative here. Um, where this equals zero uh, is where your points of inflection are. You also need to look for where it's undefined. In this case, we don't have an undefined, but if it were, you need to set up intervals for that. It just won't be an inflection point. So you're just going to get one here because this is never undefined. This would be our point of inflection. If we had undefined, we would set up intervals for those as well, but for this one, we only have this one. We're gonna do the same thing as we did with increasing, decreasing, but we are gonna plug it into our second derivative. So we're gonna plug it back into second derivative here. So I plug in a zero, I get negative, And if I plug in a 2, I get positive. So this is concave down. And this is concave up. 